Folks, I am delighted to be here, and I appreciate your being here. I uh, want to add just one thing to all this exaggeration that you've endured. Uh, in the work that I do now voluntarily with continuing care and assisted living residents, primarily in the Triangle area, we don't use the word memoir or autobiography, we call it life writing. And as some of you in this room are as old as I am, we've thought it was important that these men and women who have downsized and moved to another stage of life finally get their papers decipherable by their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And so they write brief essays about the lives they've lived. And at the end of each session, which lasts about six days, one day a week for six weeks, I make a sampler, an autobiography anthology. I take it to Sir Speedy or Kinko's or somewhere like that and print them, give everybody in the workshop a copy so that they can share it with their audience. Then I give the institution a copy. And it's the institution's copy that I want to uh, emphasize. When the people who've written those personal essays get to the stage of again wearing diapers or having someone feed them or clean them or give them their medication. What those people were when they could write will be available in the library of the continuing care community or the assisted living community. So the caregiver, the doctor, the nurse, the aide, the relative who happened to visit and say he didn't know who I was, they can go and read who that person was when he or she could still write. So there's a continuity of care that's available from the work that all of us could do in our communities. And it allows those of us who've loved working in education, whether formal or informal, to have a role in being sure that when we're at the end of life in the care network that we have chosen or has been chosen for us, the people who care for us don't have to think of us as an old man who peed his pants. And we're all aware that we don't like that kind of indignity. We want the respect that we are due and there's a way to get it done whether you grow old at home or in the best continuing care community our state has to offer. All of this grew for me out of my career in education. All of it grew for me out of a career in land-grant education. And that means that the people are the constituents of education, that the citizens of the state support the institutions that allow us to do what we're capable of doing, what we've been educated to do, and what we love to do. And so even in the volunteer lives that we lead in retirement, we have a chance to be sure that we and all the people that we love and work with get the respect and dignity that they're due even at the extremists of their lives. So I thank all of you and I see in this audience people who've been uh, devoted to the same kinds of things that, that I've had an opportunity to enjoy doing. And I thank all of you. And uh, I remember the first time I ever saw Michael Parker who came into the network of the work that we were doing from NC State University when he was a young family man living in Raleigh. And I hired him to go somewhere in North Carolina and talk about John Ely, who 
earlier had a role in this organization and in the enrichment of our lives. So the network is a genuine, real thing, and it has everything to do with our dignity and respect as human beings. So I thank you all very, very much.